there. <laughs> All right, guys, we are here for our very, very first Q&A with Dana Lamb of the Surprise Date Challenge. Dana, tell us what this is all about. Uh, well, uh, you know, Katie and I were talking about, I, I monitor a lot in different moms groups, not just Mom Nation, but primarily Mom Nation, because it's the best group, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I see things that women comment about and need help with in their, in their relationships. So we were chatting, like, how could I be of service and, and help more people? So Katie thought this might be the best way. So this is our first one, and we're giving it a try, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and so I know sometimes if you if you have a question that you want to ask, um, well, don't DM me now. But the next, if we do that when we do this again, if you let me know what questions you want to know, if you want to be anonymous <laughs> and not let people know some of your issues, if there's a sensitive issue, um, feel free to do that so we can talk about it because you're probably not alone. There's probably somebody else who feels the same way or is having the same issue in their relationship. But I think this is a a safe place so if you if there's something that comes up while we're talking and you have a, a question that you need help with either I or maybe some of the other ladies on the line will you know have a suggestion for you um, so I can start with um, Katie do you want me to start with the questions that I that I kind of received in advance well first let's see for those that are here if they have any specific questions and maybe start there and then um if you know we start getting so we're gonna run for about an hour or so i'm guessing um if we start getting you know close to that time with the members that we have here awesome if not then we can use those questions does that sound good yeah yeah sure okay that sounds great and and just to give everyone a little bit of background about me so i have the surprise date challenge i'm author of the book the surprise date challenge Challenge. So we primarily help couples to keep the mystery and passion and romance alive by planning one surprise date a month for each other. And so it's all what we find is that couples really, um, when they're having difficulty, they're usually not having fun. And so if you can add a little bit of fun into your relationship, it really does connect you and bonds you and shifts your relationship. So primarily we have a date concierge service, but in working, being in relationship myself and being in, um, you know, I personally, we have a therapist that we go to if we, if we need to, and it just need to bounce things or have a, have a mediator. So I'm very knowledgeable in, in helping couples and what, what may work or coming up with some different solutions, or sometimes you're so close to this situation that there may be something that you haven't, haven't thought of, you know, that you could try or do something differently. So if anybody or who, does anyone have a, a question that they need help with or date ideas, any, anything burning? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. I have a question. Yeah. This is Lindsay. Hello. Hi, Lindsay. Um, so I'm a first time mom. Okay. Um, and I have a 10 month old. Um, and we live out here in Arizona. We don't really, we don't have any family out here. Mm -hmm. Um, so we haven't gone out, right? So we've only, I'm sorry, we've gone out one time when, um, his mom came out here and we went out for a couple hours and then, um, came home. I think that what we kind of struggle with is the fact that, you know, we don't have family out here. So, you know, trusting somebody to take care of our daughter and then right. you know, to go out and like, and then, you know just that whole thing and kind of getting over that hump is really tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so we end up just not doing anything and we just have like a lot of nights where it's like, you know, we get off of work and then it's like, we watch TV, we eat dinner and then we go to bed mm -hmm. and then rinse and repeat. And it's just, it's really right. kind of boring, mm -hmm. um, and monotonous. And so I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm trying to figure out some things to do that maybe we could do all together because I mean, we do both really enjoy, I mean, obviously hanging out with our daughter, but right. um, you know, some things that we can all do that would still be fun for us as well, you know, and mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I get that. And I know it's, um, you know, as far as, and, and that actually is some of the, one of the issues or, or one of the questions that somebody had was about, yeah. Childcare and not having that available. So, um, 
obviously, especially when you have a 10 month old who can't mm-hmm. speak or tell you anything, I know that's really important to have that, that yeah. child with somebody that you trust. So, I mean, a couple of options just for that first, um, before I get into like some maybe date ideas or things you could do together, um, would be, I, I mean, there are some, you know, there are nanny you know, services Mm -hmm. that are out there that are professional companies that do background checks, you know, that, that bed. And, and I, you know, I was really lucky because I always have my in-laws to watch my kids and my boys are 15 and 19. So I've already been through all of this, all of the, everywhere anybody's at here. I've probably been in that stage pretty much. So um, my in-laws, I was really lucky to have that, but I had a lot of friends who didn't have that available. Mm -hmm. So some of my friends, did have, you know, actual nannies that they could rely on. And I know Mom Nation is a great group. You could probably um, find another mom or parent that maybe has a similar child your age. And that would be something, especially depending, everybody has different financial situations too. So if you don't have a budget, you know, trade, be like, okay, this twice a month, like whatever it is, Friday, Saturday night, you trade, you take care of their baby for a couple of hours so they can have some alone time. And then once, you know, once or twice a month, they watch your baby. So you can, you can have a date night. So that would be one way hiring. I think I, I actually in college was a nanny and loved kids. And so I was, um, I ended up being a live-in nanny for a while. So, you know, there are people out there that you can trust and those companies, you know, vet them. And I think you can use your intuition in meeting somebody if they're going to take care of your child. And for the first few times, Skype, zoom in with them, Skype, you know, FaceTime them to see your baby and make sure they're, you know, everything's okay would be another option. Um, I think it's so important to have alone time and just, I was married for 13 years and my, and my um, marriage ended in partly because we put our kids first. And so Mm -hmm. I see so many parents, I mean, it's so easy to do because I get it. You love this little girl so much. You, you want to give her your time, but the whole reason that you have this little girl is because you and your husband had a romantic partnership and have a sexual relationship. That's why this baby exists. So you need to keep that, um, that alive. And I don't know if you're familiar with Esther Perel. Uh, she Mm -hmm. is a famous psychotherapist and she wrote a book called mating in captivity. And, Hmm. You know, she says we need two things in relationship. We need, we need to have stability. You want to know your partner has your back. You know, your family's taken care of. That whole Maslow's love. You know, you, yeah. you, we need to have food, shelter. You want to know that your husband's there for you and your daughter. All of those things. But unfortunately, that's boring. You know, I mean, there's nothing sexy about that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So what creates desire? Like what brought you together is the unknown. It's the excitement, the thrill. It's a little bit of riskiness, right? When you're first dating somebody, you're putting yourself out there. You're being vulnerable and sharing things about you. And what if they don't like it? Or what if they reject you or vice versa, you know? And so you've got to create a little bit of mystery and desire. And you also have to have some alone time with your partner because Mm -hmm. what kind of life is that going to leave for your daughter? If seven years down the road, you're like, Oh, we go out once a year and Mm -hmm. I don't even like this person or know this person anymore because it's all about my daughter. That's not your family any good. So, because it's really easy in, um, you know, and something that I have noticed is that like, you know, because obviously I, you know, I breastfeed with her. Mm-hmm. So she, I do a, like the primary of, you know, nighttime stuff. And it's like, it's caused like a little bit of like resentment, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like, I'm doing the bulk of this work and I'm, you know, I'm providing her food and I'm taking her to daycare and doing all. And so it's like, I'm doing all of this plus what I did before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just like, it's so much. And then we also don't, I don't, we don't go out and do anything. And, you know, so just to kind of like go, I guess, one level deeper with this is that like, you know, when, when I brought this up, it's, you know, I'll say, you know, I still want to be pursued, you know, I still want to be pursued as a woman. And as a, you know, even though, yes, I'm a mom and it's kind of what you said before, like, like I, this was a concern that I brought up when I first became pregnant. I said, you know, I I am all about, I want to make our child first. I said, Mm -hmm. but we have to be first too. It's like, we, you know, we have to make sure that we maintain this. And I just have realized, you know, that it just hasn't continued that Mm -hmm. way. So, um, and I guess I don't really know how to, um, get it back because like when, 
when I do bring it up, it'll be kind of like a boomerang, right? We go back and it's like, oh, it's like flash bang in the pan. And then all of a sudden it just goes back to what it was before. Um, and I think that that's really the hard part is just kind of saying, okay, you know, how can we fix this and make this better? And because without continuing this spiral of resentment, because mm -hmm then that's just going to be bad for everybody. Right. Because right. I'm going to eventually mm -hmm. hit a certain point mm -hmm. and say, okay, like, you know, line in the sand, you know, and that's what I don't want to get to. Yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. want to get to that point. I've been married before. So mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been married, I was married for seven right. years, you know, so it's like, I've been through that. I've been through divorce and it was, you know, and you get so to a point of no return yeah. at some point, right? You know, and, and I so try that's, to get him to understand yeah. that without mm -hmm. talking about like my relationship with him because I don't want to be like <laughs> sensitive oh, to that. You know, you know, it's hard. Right. It's hard to like right. You know, kind but of that's say, what you have hey, to I'm compare to, yeah. and you want to you you want to learn from. We want to learn from our experiences, right? Yeah. And do better the next time and not repeat those same patterns. So you already know what happened. Yeah, but you kind of got stuck in a rut, and then you fall out of love, and when you lose affinity for your mm -hmm your partner, um, you know, we, in our book, we talk about the ABCs and the ABCs right. are affinity. You have to like your partner and have affinity for them. I yeah. mean, why do you want to sleep and live with somebody you don't really care for or have affinity right. for, right? The second thing is balance. You have to have balance in your life and all of those areas. And actually in our, um, I was trying to find it in our workshop, we have, we do a, a wheel of, this is a wheel of life. And okay. so it's kind of cool. It has it. So it's, you rate yourself from one to 10. So if you're if you're um, a 10 in your family and parenting, but in your relationship, you're a five, you know, that's not good. You want your wheel to be your life to be balanced. So yeah. the B is for balance and C is communication. And that's another area I think people lack is that we expect our partner and they expect us to know what they're thinking and what they're feeling and what they desire and what they need. And yeah, user, I, I don't know if any of you can read minds, but I'm not a mind reader and I don't know what my partner wants. I do know when he's upset about something, you right. know, and I can tell when his energy shifts mm -hmm. and I'll say, Hey, what's going on? And a lot of times he'll go nothing. And we have a conversation mm -hmm. where we, where I say, okay, well, I know that's not true. You know, that's not true. I can sense there's something going on here. And if you don't want to talk about it right now, that's totally okay. Just say, I don't want to talk about it right now, but it's not okay for you to say nothing's wrong and sweep right. under the rug. So one of the biggest things I think is, and it sounds like you've started to do that is to have a conversation to say, I agree, you know, this is what I'm fearful of. And yeah. I don't want, and talking in childlike terms, like talk, like talk to your, say, um, speak like you're speaking to a five-year-old, you know, right. honestly, because, and in conversations that will draw somebody near you, like, wow, I'm so afraid of, you know, um, having distance between us and not feeling connected to you that things, you know, that it will get to a point of no return. And I want to yeah. make sure that doesn't happen. And so it's really about being intentional in your relationship. And so we have a lot of free tools. Like you don't, you don't need to hire us or pay us to plan dates. You can, and that's something we do. But if, if you go to, um, and this is why we created our companies because we mm -hmm. want to help couples and I want to save relationships and families. I feel so awful that my kids every other week for many years went back and forth between mm -hmm. my house and their dads and, and just that they don't even like being in the same room with us. I mean, it's horrible. You know, I just don't yeah. wish that on any family or any kid. And it's such a huge impact, not just to our family, but to the world and what kind of human yeah. beings they're going to be. And, you know, economically in the world, I mean, it, it affects, so affects everybody when, when a family doesn't stay together, I think. So if, um, if you go to our website, which is surprisedatechallenge.com, we have a, the, um, surprise date club, which is absolutely free and you can sign up and we send out, um, we'll send out, um, once, once a week, usually it might, two to four times a month, you'll get an email and it will just, it, uh, well, initially when you sign up, you're going to get an inspiration kit that's going to talk to you about how do you plan surprise dates? How do you keep that magic mystery alive? We give you 52 uh, date ideas um, in there as well. And we have a little proclamation and it's, it's kind of kitschy, but it's just basically... I think it's a great communication tool to take to your partner to yeah. say, Hey, I want our relation. You have this, like, Hey, this company has this thing. And it's all about committing to planning one surprise date a month for each other. And the key is the surprise. Yeah. Is, and it's not dinner in a movie because that does nothing for a relationship. Right. And it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can, right. you can make a tent over your bed when your daughter goes to sleep. 
you know, put her to bed and for a seriously $5, go to the dollar store. Um, Marty went and got these little silk, the silk roses, rose petals. And he said, text me when you're coming home. Or, I mean, you could even say, go in the spare bedroom or go in the bathroom for a minute. Uh, give me 20 minutes or 15 minutes to set up the, the tent, you know, and surprise him, you know, even though he's right yeah. there in the house and, and make a trail from the bathroom, bedroom, whatever your daughter's room, wherever he is and make a trail of rose petals to your bedroom. Um, get, make sure you get the expensive 3M, you know, those 3M little oh. sticky hooks yeah. because I, we use the dollar store one and it ripped the paint off our wall. Not good. So get the really expensive ones, tie a string from wall to wall over your bed. You can even use like a little plastic, um, tablecloth, like, you yeah. know, again, 99 cent store, get some, um, uh, the, um, you can get twinkly lights, like especially mm -hmm. at Christmas time and they're really lightweight. So get, you can string twinkly lights in there, get, you can get the little battery operated candles and light them up and have like, if you drink alcohol or have a non-alcoholic cocktail, whatever, have a little cocktail and be like little kids, you know, I mean, those are, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but the whole thing is, is if you take the, and I think, where do I have the proclamation? It's in our book. So the proclamation, um, you can, you, again, you get the download. So you get all of that for free, but if you go to them, then you're not having to recreate the wheel. You can go, Hey, you know, there's this idea. Would you be yeah. willing to commit to plan one surprise date a month, every month? So you plan one for him and he plans one for you. And yeah. we have tons of free ideas. Like again, on our website, if you don't know what to do, our book has like 12 ideas in it that you can do from free to, you know, elaborate. Um, but it's just, it's making that commitment and the intention yeah. because Otherwise it doesn't happen. You're tired. You're, it, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. What do you want to do tonight? And you end up ordering Uber Eats and, and watching like, Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And before you know it, you may be divorced and we don't want that. Right. Right. Awesome. Can I info, that? Dana. Yeah. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh yeah. You're welcome. Was that, was that a, that was a nice thorough answer, Lindsay. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. That was, exactly what I was kind of looking for because it's like it really kind of gives that validation so it's not necessarily that we don't know what to do it's just sometimes taking all of you know the confusion and overwhelm and putting it all into one place I think is what we need sometimes so or what I need so I and try it just try it so the whole surprise date challenge is three months it's right. just you know what try it for three months yeah. and re and see what it does for your relationship I guarantee you it's going to be better because we have not had one person go, well, this doesn't work <laughs> yeah. or my relationship is worse because of this. You know, we just, oh, yeah. Yeah, just planned a, a date for a guy who he's been, they've been together for six years. They're not married. And we, we did do um, plan to date for them a couple weeks ago. And I said, how did it go? And he said, Oh my gosh, he goes, it was so fun and amazing. And he said, I didn't tell you this, but our relationship, we've been on the rocks. And we've been going through a rough patch and I've been wondering if we were going to make it. And he said, I can't believe what one plant, he planned one surprise date for her, how it changed mm -hmm. her attitude. Yeah. It changed. Um, it, he said, it just changed the dynamics of their relationship. You know, just, I mean, that he, cause he made the effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Awesome. We have another <laughs> question. It's an anonymous question, Dana. Okay. Um, what if your spouse is an addict? An addict. Um, you mean a drug addict, an alcohol addict, a sex addict, or could be any of those? Or I mean, yeah, addicted to anything. I mean, how, how do you get through? How do you, I mean, obviously there's some other things tied up in there, but as far as your relationship is concerned. Right. Wow. Um, you know, relationships are hard enough, you know, without having to deal with, um, you know, other issues on, on top of, on top of that. You know, I, I really think probably in that situation, it would be very good to, I guess, have a counselor or count, you know, somebody, at least for yourself, if your partner won't, isn't willing to go to, you know, counseling or, or get, or get help. So I guess, um, do you know any more details if they're a recovering addict? Like, so they could go off the wagon anytime or they're still like in the middle of their addiction. Uh oh, I lost sound again. I you didn't. I was just oh. unmuted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just muted. Duh. <laughs> I'm not used to being muted. Okay. Um, okay. It's a current situation. It's a current situation. Yeah. 
Wow. And, you know, and I don't, I have not had an experience with, um, I mean, I actually, my dad was an alcoholic, so I have experience with addiction. I haven't, and my sister is too, but she's both of them like recovered. Um, you know, so I, I have not personally been in the middle of that situation where I've had that and I haven't had a, I have not had a client yet who's had that, had that situation. So other than, I mean, obviously getting, I guess it depends on how serious the situation is or how, you know, willing they are to, to change. Um, I would imagine that even if you, you, they were willing to commit to, you know, planning dates or doing activities or things together, um, they may not, they may not be available to show up (laughs) or may flake on you or that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I think that that's definitely, definitely a more serious issue that probably needs therapy. Got you. Thank you. Um, I've got another one for you. Unless anybody else has any questions that they would like to ask directly to Dana? You know, one other thing I was just going to say about that is, I mean, I guess you never know, and I don't know knowing where there, where it is, but I guess, you know, really being honest and having a heart to heart about what the addiction is doing to you, to your family and, you know, taking baby steps and working towards what, um, you know, trying to come up together with a plan, even if it's baby steps to make a shift, you know, with each other. Mm -hmm. And does that hold true for, you you mentioned all the different types of addiction or some of the different types of addiction. Does that hold true for a recovering sex addict as well? We have a mama that uh, separated, not really sure where to start over, how to enter that conversation. Right. Oh, she's um, starting over with somebody who is currently like a sex act or recovering or something. It sounds like she is separated from Mm. recovering sex addict, but maybe wanting to um, get Get back back together. together. I'm not certain on that. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I don't have, I don't really feel like I'm qualified really. I don't have enough experience like with, um, with actual sex addicts too. You know, I think when in those more serious situations, I mean, it's really important to, and there's a lot of quacks out there too. So I think right. it's really important that you find, if you can, even through a referral, find somebody that you know is really good and helpful. And I mean, for an example of that, my um, my son who's 15 is on the autism spectrum and, and we took him to, I can't even count dozens of therapists since he was seven years old and nobody diagnosed, I actually pretty much diagnosed him myself. <laughs> mm. Like last December when he was almost 15 because I was talking with a woman whose daughter um, was on the spectrum and she her um, daughter was go, um, in college and she was talking about her. And so, and I go, wow, that sounds really similar to my son. And she told me about a book, look me in your, look me in the eye. I read that. And then I took him to a specialist, actually two specialists, you know, to just confirm, you know, get their, their opinion and have them evaluated. So there, I mean, you know, it's, you really have to make sure that you have the right person when you're seeking therapy too. Now I know that you have some referrals and resources for different things like that, but would you suggest maybe finding a support group in the local area because they might have more suggestions and more referrals, things like that? Yeah. And I'm a little bit, um, you know, support groups, again, I think you really have to find the right support group because if you're mm-hmm. going to a support group and everybody is there just having a pity party, yeah, and woe is me, that's not going to do you any good because you can't really change the past. I think you need to make sure that you have um, good support people that are um, going to encourage you to move on. So, um, for example, actually, my um, in between my divorce and my current relationship, I had a partner who ended up having leukemia, so he died. I took care of him for eight months. Mm-hmm. And um, I joined a group called Hope for Widows, and I, like, left the group because <laughs> – I mean, just people, I mean, we're in there like four years and they couldn't move on with their lives or, you know, get over and they were just wallowing and it was depressing. And, you know, and I understand like in the beginning, it kind of helped me a little bit. So I think you have to be really careful with support groups. And, you know, it's so important that what they say is the the five people you hang around the most is who you become like. Mm -hmm. So put yourself in with, you know, obviously people who can relate to you and give you advice and help I think is really good. Um, But also just making sure that it's uplifting and positive. 
Awesome. Love it. Um, anybody else that's on the call have anything direct for Dana? We got, you know, about 28 minutes or so left. We can start reading some of the questions from folks that weren't able to make the call today. Um, but you can message me privately uh, if you'd like for me to ask it for you, or you can just unmute and have at it. Anybody? All right. Hey, Dana. Oh, we yeah. got somebody. Okay. Um, I just have, and it's, I don't know, I guess, if it follows along with this, um, like the whole topic and stuff, but um, one of the things that I always seem to struggle with, with and I, I don't want to make it sound like I try to drag him to go do anything, but with my husband is trying to do something that is out of his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, one example is a few weeks ago, my sister had brought me to goat yoga, and I'd never done that before, mm -hmm. and it was so much fun and it's so not yoga which is totally right. fun and i had mentioned to my husband that i think it would be a lot of fun to go with our two kids we have a five-year-old and a two and a half year old uh -huh. and so i had mentioned to him you know maybe we should do it as a family mm -hmm. but he he kind of laughed he's like well i don't know and then he just kind of like shuts it down like well no i don't really think i'd like that so I'd, i i Mm -hmm. I don't want to push him, but I, okay, like to Amber, try to I have the solution for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's make it a surprise. <laughs> so, and I, I'm telling you this is actually, we love goat yoga. And just so you know, um, uh, on our website, we have the date ideas page. And right now we have like 35 partners and one of them is goat yoga and you okay. get, um, you can save five bucks off two people. So oh. If you're taking a family of four, you can save $10. So um, if you use our discount codes, we have a lot of different discounts. But this totally, um, we hear this a lot with whether it's with your dates and, or your kids. And we do, we do fun family rituals with our kids and we surprise them. And same mm -hmm. thing. It, I don't want to hear about them complaining that they don't want to do <laughs> it and that kind of thing. And maybe they won't. Like we did, I did a surprise date to goat, uh, goat yoga with my family. And one of my sons loved it. The other one did it so much. But hey, they went, we did it. They um, won't have time to complain because you're surprising them. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I did with Mark. Yes. <laughs> I, I honestly, somebody, one of my, actually one of our clients told me that she did that as a surprise date and she loved it. And so I'm like, okay, I go, I don't even know if I want, I didn't know if I wanted to do it because I thought uh -huh. that the goats might poo or pee, uh, pee or poop on right. me, you know? And I'm like, do I want to do goat yoga? That sounds weird. So, but I thought, but I'm always looking for do, new things and out of the box experiences. And I knew Marty probably, he said, if I would have said to him, do you want to do goat yoga? He would have said, absolutely not, not interested right. in that at all. So I didn't, what I did is I said, be ready at four o'clock on Friday. And they had an afternoon yoga class. And I, I said, wear, wear, just wear your gym clothes, workout clothes, yoga clothes, whatever, threw our yoga mats in the trunk. So we had no idea they were in there. And then we live in central Phoenix. We drove to Gilbert and mm -hmm. it was like, he's like, where the heck are we going for an hour? So we went to a five o'clock class. We were kind of running late because of traffic. And he, he like was just petting the baby goats. He had such a good time. And, you know, when we got there, we were in a hurry and he's like, are we at goat yoga? And I go, yeah. And we, we just ran in and got set up. So he didn't have time to think about it. So there was no whining, no complaining, none of that. And then we went to Santan Flats. And, you know, they had a band and we had a burger and roast, you know, cooked s'mores. And then when I took the kids, we did the, we did the morning class. And then we went to Queen Creek Olive Mill and had lunch and they had a band out. It was on a Saturday when the weather was a little nicer than it is now. And so that's kind of a combo thing you could do for um, either, you know, a surprise date or with, with your kids. So um, this works really, really well for people. And, and again, I would just maybe if you talk to your husband and approach it and say, Hey, I'd like to try this, you know, doing, um, a surprise we do where we plan surprise dates for each other. And if you want to include mm -hmm. the family, that kind of thing, so that we can maybe get out of our comfort zone and out of our box and try, try new things. And, and if they're resistant to it, I just say, you know, if your husband really loves you and you can say, if you just heart to heart and say, this is really important to me, like mm -hmm. it, it really is important to me. And I really want to do this. Can you please just try it for three months? Just give it a three months try mm -hmm. and, and see, and, and we just had a, we, and it's not just women, but here, um, are men that are resistant. It's, it's, um, men, we find a hard time. Don't like to plan dates. Like women, a lot of times will be the planners. And what we've discovered from working with hundreds of clients is it's because we as women shoot them down and we don't realize it. So if your husband had maybe said, hey, do you want to go to goat yoga or top golf or whatever? And you're like, no, I don't want to do that after so long. You're 
men don't like to be rejected and they consider that kind of a rejection. And then they're like, oh, well, she knows what she likes to do. So she'll, I'll just let her plan it. And we want to be, as it was Lindsay, I think that said, we want to be pursued and wooed, right? And so when men stop planning dates, you know, that's, you know, that's not, you know, when, when people say dating, they think of single people or newly, newly dating people. People don't think about their dating their spouse when they've been married five years or 10 years or 20 years that, and so we want to retrain people to think date, you should date your spouse forever. You know, you should be 80 and planning surprise dates, you know, for each other. No, that, and that's a really good point. I mean, we've, um, we're coming up on 11 years and we got married young. I was 20. So we've kind of reached that point where we're just kind of like, oh, you know, this works, but right. it'll be kind of a little bit more fun to do a little bit more, especially with the kids to get out and. Yeah. Yeah. Another, how old are your kids? Um, we have a five-year-old, so he'll be going into first grade. And then we have a two and a half year old. Um, she'll be three in October. Okay. Okay. I, there's another cool thing, but they're kind of a little bit young for that. The five-year-old might be okay, but he's probably still too young. I was going to say the lavatory is like a giant ball pit for grownups. So that's a lot of fun. Nice. So, and you can get $5 off on our website for that, but you probably want to get a babysitter. Yeah. That's <laughs> and that would probably be another one. I would not tell your husband you're doing. Right. You'd probably be like, I'm not going to do a giant ball pit, you know? And mm-hmm. I mean, it's not very long. It's like, you probably want to spend 30 minutes, 60 minutes max, you know? Know, and then go have dinner and talk about, you know, your experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, you know, there was one other thing I was going to say. We had, oh, we had a client that his wife, it was kind of the opposite. She always would say, oh, I don't really want to do that. And he took her to wonder spaces and he goes, it was so great to have it as a surprise because she couldn't complain or whine or she would say, <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm going to like that because she was the same way. Didn't really like trying new things and she mm-hmm. loved it and had a ball. And he said it was so stress-free for him because he didn't have to hear the complaining before, right. before the event. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Great question. Anybody else before, I think we have time for probably one more. Anybody else have a question before we get into something that we've received outside of the group? Going once, going twice. All right, Miss Dana. Okay. Um, so looking at the questions, I mean, we covered, I think some of them with the, you know, people were talking, um, about, so one of them I wanted to address, actually, there's kind of two questions here. There's one, one person said, um, what if I don't really like my spouse right now, <laughs> which I thought was <laughs> interesting. And then, um, that, you know, and I think, I think part of that happens because you're probably not having enough fun you know, in your relationship. So really get committed to, you know, having fun and having some good, good conversations with with each other. Another one is, um, that I got was what if your spouse unintentionally stands you up every time because of work restrictions? Um, so it sounds like they maybe plan dates and then they're, they, their husband no shows. And it's interesting because this question, I actually, I saw somebody else venting and complaining and it it was a different, it was somebody different on the, on, I think it was mom nation that they were stood up. And I don't know if it's like, um, maybe an entrepreneurial thing or when somebody is really, really busy for work. And I think it just goes down to, um, in those situations, you really have to be willing to have a tough conversation. And I would, you know, try having it on your own and honest heart to heart. And again, talk in words that are going to make, that are going to draw them to you. You know, things like, wow, you know, I really put a lot of work and effort into planning this special moment, dinner, whatever it is for you. And you said you would be there and you didn't show up and you weren't there. And it makes me feel, I'm just using my words that I might, how I would feel. So I would, you can put in your own words, but I would say, wow, you know, it really makes me feel unlovable. It really makes me feel that I'm not valued and I'm not worthy, you know, and I don't think you mean to make me feel that way, but did you even realize, because they may not know how it makes you feel. So talk about how it makes you feel in childlike feel, um, words. I mean, you could even say well, it really hurt my feelings and made me sad. I mean, just even those um, words. And we have a, in our workshop that we, that we do, we have, um, there's a whole page actually in there about loving loving conversations together and we have emotionally 
focused words, like examples of things that you can use. And it might feel weird at first, but it just takes practice. And you might have to have the conversation more than once, you know, and then it's about, you know, finding out, well, where are they at? You know, and hopefully they're going to say, oh my gosh, I had no idea I made you feel that way. I'm so sorry. I was just thinking about the business and the money or whatever it may be. And, and then, you know, maybe bring up, a, you know what, what, what is all that money worth if we're divorced or we're not together? You know, I mean, I think it's really being clear. Like, do you want to be with me? You know, do you want to be in this relationship? And, and, and so asking all of those questions. And if you're nervous, I would make sure, like, really think about it and, and maybe write them down. I mean, it's okay to have notes if you get nervous or emotional or get off track. And, and, you know, that's another thing that we recommend is, um, is once, like once a month that you have, um, you know, check-in conversations or a monthly review. And this is a part of our online course that we have. And so once a month, if you schedule time with your partner, um, where you both write down things and you talk about, hey, what's going really good in our relationship? And wow, what can we maybe, how can we improve it? What's not going so good and how can we improve it? Then you're not talking about, you can kind of talk about it. You're, you're having that evaluation once a month, just like you would for a job versus when you're upset or angry. But I just think it's really important. And then, and then try to get your partner on, you know, just let them know this is very, very important to me. And if you want to use, you know, the surprise date challenge and say, you know, I'd like to try this out for three months. Can you commit? And, and maybe, and you can make it your own. We have clients who um, do a surprise date for each other every week. They take turns. For me, it, it was too much. So we kind of decided once a month. We have other people who like he'll plan a date one month and then she'll do the next month. So maybe two times a month is too much. So you make it your own. These are just, we're just trying to give you some ideas to help your relationship to flourish. I, l I love the checking in part. And to speak from, you know, being the entrepreneur that really has a crazy schedule, to kind of speak from that other side, um, what really helped me, and this may help the husband in this situation, is your family is an appointment. Yes. So you make it's, it's almost like it's a business appointment. You wouldn't miss a business appointment because of other work, right? Right. So you, you put it in the calendar and you make that an appointment. Right. And I will tell you that that's, that's how I'm able to, I don't know if there is balance is ever really achievable, right? But that's how <laughs> okay. I'm able to get near balanced, um, right. you know, with what I do and with everything that I have going on. My family time is an appointment. And right. if somebody calls me and says, hey, I need to see three houses at four o'clock today, but it's in my schedule that my kid's home and that's family time mm -hmm. for me that day, mm -hmm. then it's, I'm sorry, I'm with somebody, I have an appointment. And I don't need to tell them the details of that appointment, right. but I do need to have that family time. Otherwise, what right. you said, Dana, is absolutely accurate. What the hell am I working for if my family up and leaves? Right. Yeah. Yes, I think it's having those conversations and you may have to have, I mean, because this may be a habit that they have created this habit and breaking a habit is, is going to be probably challenging. And so you have to come up with a solution of, well, first of all, you have to get his commitment. Is he going to be, you know, let him know how you feel and is he willing to, is he willing to change? Is he committed to changing? And then how are you going to make sure, how is he going to make sure, what can you do to support him to make sure it, it happens? Is it having his secretary call and make sure that to remind him, is it you texting and reminding him? And if you know he's late all the time, lying and being like, you need to be home at four when maybe it's really 4.30, just in case he's late. So you got to play those games sometimes maybe. Right. And but having just, a shared calendar is very helpful too. Mm -hmm. I have a shared calendar with mm -hmm. Matt. He knows where all my appointments mm -hmm. are and, you know, and vice versa. So that's right. really helpful as well. And, and seeing the value that, you know what, if he says no to whatever no says no to somebody else you know they're either gonna he may lose the business or he may they may reschedule you know mm -hmm. and yep. but that but that you're worth it that you're worth it your family's worth it whatever it may be and that you that you you know have have that and I mean who can't do that you know once a month and and not and I don't want to be too I mean I guess I am going to be really blunt I mean if he's not willing to change and not willing to do that I mean are you willing to live the rest of your life that way? Or maybe you need to make a change and, and maybe it's not the right relationship, you know? Exactly. Love mm -hmm. it. Great, great answer. 
So we got about 15 minutes left. I think we probably have time for one more. We did have one come up in the chat bar. Dana, I know you've been doing a lot of talking and you probably have some notes and some things at your own station there. I don't know if you've seen the chat, but the chat's oh, been gosh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've been keeping it rolling. Like people are asking oh, cool. for, you know, oh, what's the laboratory? And so I'm posting up the website and your website and all that stuff. So oh, I'm cool. kind of trying to keep okay. up with it. Um, but uh, Tracy had mentioned that, you know, what about when you're so tired from chasing around kids? She's a stay at home mom. She's got a couple of little guys. Mm -hmm. um, by the time they're in bed, husband makes advances. She's like held to the no. I am way too tired. Um, I got to pass <laughs> out. So how do we stop that from happening or at least from happening frequently and yeah. not hurt our spouse? Yeah. Well, even, okay. Even when we do date nights, I mean, I, it's funny. We just went out to dinner with some friends who, you know, they don't have little kids. Our kids are grown. I don't even have little kids anymore. And I'm still sometimes exhausted, but we went to dinner and we actually, this came up in conversation and they're like, yeah, we have sex now before we go out. Because by the time you go out and you have dinner and you come back, you know, your tummy's full, you maybe had a cocktail you're too tired to have sex. And, you know, and so, um, and we, you know, Marty and I work at home, so we have a lot of flexibility, you know, we have flexibility in our schedule. And so afternoon delight makes it really easy. And I know when you have small kids, it may not, but I mean, find a time, put them down for a nap, you know, and, and maybe, or maybe it's morning sex, you know, before the kids are up, set your alarm, get up a little earlier. Maybe you don't even tell your partner and surprise them, you know? Oh, I like that idea. Go sneak what? in and brush your teeth first. I always hate having like the dinosaur breath. So yeah, right? get up to go to the bathroom, you set go your pee. alarm, go brush your teeth, and then come back and pick your honey up. <laughs> what husband doesn't like morning sex? Come on. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that could be that could be a solution. That is a huge issue though, Katie. And so wh whoever, yeah, whoever asked that question, you are not alone. That is um, for all of us. So it's it's all about you know, we can all, we, you can either give excuses about why you're not successful, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can be successful. Those are your choices. So do you want to complain or, I mean, um, about it, or do you want to find a solution? So there's always a workaround if you can think about it. You know, one of the things I talked to as being tired is, um, that was actually on my list is, um, if you guys have all heard of Marie Kondo and like tidying up your house. We did a, we were on ABC 15 talking about tidying up your relationship. And if you want, if you've watched any of the Netflix Marie Kondo, there was one time like a couple uh, because things were so disorganized in their house and, and maybe, so maybe the root cause of you being so tired is you need to downsize or get rid of some of your clutter or hire a housekeeper or, you know, just being more organized can save you time and stress and you'll be less stressed. So then you'll want to have sex more. You know, so what is maybe the root cause isn't you being tired, but what can you change so that you're not so tired or to ease your life? Or maybe there, maybe you say yes to too many things. I mean, do you really have to do everything at your kid's school or for the PTO or, or, you know, with your friends, maybe if your relationship is really important, you need to change some of the other things in your life so that you have the time and energy for your, what should be your number one relationship, your partner. Totally agree. Saying no is hard for a lot of people. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's was really something that I struggled with for a little while. Now I have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've only got about 10 minutes left, Dana. So is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, anything else you'd like to suggest um, or promote? Anything like that? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, somebody else did have a schedule um, or had a question about they work opposite schedules from their spouse. And so, um, you know, and that, you know, there are some people that have, you know, tougher situations, but again, I would say don't give excuse, you know, you can either give excuses and have a crappy relationship and be unhappy and miserable and unsatisfied, or you can try to be creative and think of a solution and a workaround. I mean, who can't find time to have one date a month and not having money is not an excuse. I mean, there's so many free dates and things that you can do. I mean, you can create a scavenger hunt in your house and there, you know, there's all kinds of, of those things. So when people give excuses, I really don't think they're that motivated. And, and here's the thing, you can think the grass is greener and get divorced because that may seem like the easy step and, and find somebody new. 
and they may not have this, they're probably not going to have the same issues you have. You won't have the same issues. You'll have a whole new set of issues that you're going to have to work through. Yeah. So you might as well like love the one you're with (laughs) and really give a hundred, give a hundred percent and put some intention. And you know how many, I know you guys have all experienced this. Like when you, when you're intentional and you plan something and you're committed that, you know, it's on the calendar, you've already bought tickets to go to goat yoga or whatever it may may be, you may be freaking exhausted and go, Oh God, I wish I wouldn't have scheduled this. And as soon as you get there, you're going to get a second win. You're going to be so glad that you went. And we never, we usually don't regret the things we do, even the bad decisions. Mm -hmm. We usually regret the things we don't do. It's those missed opera, you know, the missed opportunities. So, and I did, I do have one other, um, um, special I wanted to offer you guys. So, uh, I know I talked a lot about, we have, we have this, um, play shop, um, that has three sections. It's a, a workbook and it's normally $98. So if you use code mom, just it's mom nation, mom nation, I'm giving, you can do it for 75% off. So Ooh. it's only, it's 24 50 for your relationship. And so what you do is you download, it's a little bit every day. So it's not overwhelming. I promise. We tell you step-by-step step what to do. So like one day, um, you know, it talks about what do you really want to create in your relationship and you each, you know, print two copies and you and your partner, you know, go through it. I mean, you can really spend, you know, 10 minutes, a couple nights a week and it can really enhance your relationship. And then you compare notes and we walk you through the whole thing. Like where do you rate each, where do you rate yourself and where does your partner rate and sharing that? So you understand each other. We have a bunch of communication um, uh, tips in there. And then of course the last part has to be about planning three awesome dates. So you can be a part of the surprise date challenge. So um, it's a really, I just wanted to give that and, you know, and if, if, if money is holding anybody about, you know, reach out to me and I would, I would of course gift it to you, you know, that uh, awesome. if money, I don't want anybody to have a bad relationship because they can't afford it. You're amazing, Dana. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, thank you for our very first Q and A with Dana. I'm super excited. Thank you for letting me record it, Dana. So we'll share this with the group. And uh, we'll be about sex. <laughs> oh, we did. Oh, no. I, know. I think we might have even said a swear word. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, hail. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm popping it up so everybody in the group can see what's going on here. And we're going to be back in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.